Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at today is the second part of the first season of Netflix's Masters of the Universe Revelation. And if you recall my review of the first, I believe, seven or eight episodes, I really liked it. What Kevin Smith, as the, the lead behind the project, did was he took what was familiar to fans of Masters of the Universe and he did slight alterations. He changed things, but in a way that didn't come off as unrecognizable or change for change's sake. It really worked really well. So with the second part, it's just more of that, which is to say we see characters acting in a manner that if you enjoyed the original series, you probably are enjoying what you're seeing. Though, as I said, he's moved them forward in really interesting ways. For instance, in the latter half of the series, it revolves less around Skeletor and He-Man. Most of the original series, that's all it was about. Sure, there'd be diversions into other characters, but on the whole, it was the He-Man and Skeletor show. The latter episodes mainly focus around Evil Lin, who manages to steal the power sword from Skeletor, and Tila, who is coming to her own as the daughter of the Sorceress, the caretaker of the original Castle Greystone. It's really interesting how they go about things, and it's a lot of fun. Another thing that works really well is that the animation is beautiful, mostly hand-drawn and really good looking. And in fact, I could swear I saw references to One Punch Man in the latter, I want to say somewhere in the latter episode of this series. It looks really good. And like I said, I like the idea that it doesn't neglect what came before. It brings it forward in really interesting ways. For instance, there's a flashback of Evelyn. She's telling her story about why she is who she is. And she talks about an encounter she had with Skeletor. And the image of Skeletor is really interesting because he has this bat insignia on his belt at the time. Now, if you follow Masters of the Universe at all, you're well aware of where that symbol comes from. It's Hordak, who I believe popped up in She-Ra first as her main opponent. Though, we discover at the end that whomever Skeletor was affiliated with at that time is also behind Motherboard. And again, I think it's Hordak, which is awesome. I've always liked him as a villain, though he's always struck me as very underpowered. Despite having a really high position in the evil hierarchy, whatever they call it. Because he seems to only have to, well, I should say in the she cartoon, all he has the power to do is change his hand to a cannon or something seems a relatively minor power and not enough that would elevate him to the ranks of the most evilest. So the idea that it's at least implying that Hordak is behind the strings of Skeletor as well as Motherboard is really interesting. And I can't say enough about how awesome the Motherboard aspect is. Now remember, Motherboard was the deity, or the entity, I should say, that Triclops was praying to and that he worships. We come to learn that Motherboard is not just a statue. After Skeletor loses his power, he goes to punish his older assistants, Triclops being one was also the head priest of Motherboard, of the Motherboard cult, whatever it's called. So Skeletor gets there and comes to discover that Motherboard is 
an entity. And all we've seen of Motherboard up to this time is a statue. We learned it's an entity. And as I said, I suspect that Hordak is behind it. This is awesome. The changes that come with the new saucers are fascinating. As I said, it takes characters you know and are familiar with and does interesting, fun things with them. This is what an update of a property should be like. It should be familiar to everyone who's seen it prior, but at the same time new and fresh. And Masters of the Universe Revelation is definitely that. And to illustrate how good this series is, I used to hate Orko in the original cartoon. He just seemed kind of pointless and kind of silly, to be totally honest. With Masters of the Universe Revelation, They've given this character a new life. I actually started getting a little choked up when his fate is revealed. It's really cool. And the way the story reconciles Tila's track is also really interesting. Keep in mind, she started the series as, as being very much anti-magic. But by the end, it's all reconciled in what I think are really interesting and fascinating ways. This is fun. It's beautifully drawn, it's interesting, and as I said, I'm pretty sure the creators did a homage to One Punch Man. I'm sure the animation is way too similar for it to be otherwise, but in any case, it is well worth watching. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Do you agree, disagree? Let me know down below. And as usual, consider a like or a follow. Peace.